Hey there, my name is E.W. Buckley and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk to you about Beat Repeat and why it is still hands down one of the coolest effects in Ableton Live. If you're unfamiliar with Beat Repeat, it is pretty much all in the name. It's an audio effect that grabs a small portion of the incoming signal and loops it so that you are able to create cool stutter and glitch-like effects. Now I can tell you from first-hand experience that I slept on Beat Repeat for like literally the first five or six years that I used Ableton Live. And so if you are like me and have skipped over it, I wanna change that for you today because now I use it all the time. It can do things effortlessly that would be so complex to do otherwise. So here is how the rest of the video is going to go. I'm gonna show you three different applications of Beat Repeat and how it can apply to three totally different aspects of your production. And by the end of the video, I'm pretty confident that you'll be a Beat Repeat power user as well. So. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So beat repeat is often used in very over top ways and for good measure, it can do that stuff really, really well. However, beat repeat is very, very good at subtle things also. A great example of its subtler side is the fact that beat repeat can really create some effortless drum rolls. Let me show you. I've got a short pattern here with drums and an 808 sub bass. So these hi-hats are at a constant 16th note pattern. And one easy way to vary them up is to add rolls. And normally you would do that by sequencing those rolls in MIDI, but we can just do it with beat repeat instead. So I'm gonna activate this instance of beat repeat here, and I'm gonna set the interval to two measures, and I'm going to set the gate to just six out of 16. Now, because we're sequencing hi-hats in a 16th note pattern to actually hear anything, we need to set the grid to some interval smaller than one over 16. So I'm just gonna set it to one over 32. Now you might've heard a bit of weird phasing going on because the dry signal from the hi-hats is overlapping with the signal from beat repeat. To fix that, we want to switch over from mix to ends. And simply what that means is that when beat repeat is triggered, the device will then only output the effect of beat repeat. Mix blends the two together. This is gonna result in an overall cleaner sound. Now, if you want to go for that classic hi-hat roll sound, then we can go a step further and introduce a pitch decay, which will just lower the pitch of every subsequent repeat. And if you don't want it to be the same every single time, you can use the variation control to introduce randomization. One of my favorite uses for beat repeat is to introduce randomized stutters and glitches. To demonstrate, let me unmute this track that I have here. I am using my instrument from my total pack, the endless string, and it is arpeggiating the output of an instance of expressive chords. And with our bass and drums, it sounds like this. <laughs> It's nice, but it sounds incredibly consistent. We can use beat repeat to introduce randomized periodic variations and stutters. So let me engage this rack that I have set up here with three instances of beat repeat and an LFO. That might seem like a lot, but that's where the opportunity comes in to talk to you about the chance control on beat repeat. So let's solo the endless string on its own and let's listen to everything that's happening here. And so we can hear, we break that steady rhythm every now and then. It isn't overwhelming and it's really only periodic. So if we look at the first instance of beat repeat, it has a 50% chance of triggering every half measure. It's the most active of the entire bunch. Now beat repeats two and three are set to a chance of 10% and 20% respectively. So they are triggering only every now and then. So let me A, B the pattern with and without this rack on its own. And with the rack.
by and large, the pattern is still recognizable, it's just more interesting now. The beat repeat that triggers every half measure is set to mix, so it is still outputting the dry signal in addition to the repeated signal. Now the other two beat repeats that trigger ever so often, they are set to in, so that way we don't miss their output when they do play, because it's more of a special event than this one that can trigger every half measure. Now let's say you like how often this half measure beat repeat triggers, but you want it to be a little less noticeable. One thing that you can actually do is use the built-in filter to filter the output of beat repeat. So let's tighten up the band and make it just a little bit higher. And when it's set to mix like this, only the output of beat repeat will be filtered. The dry signal will still pass through unfiltered. Let's give that a listen. So we saw that it triggered a couple of times. We can hear it, of course, but also whenever this little icon next to the repeat is lit, it means that the effect is active. And it was far, far, far in the background compared to where it was earlier. And finally, just to walk through what this LFO is doing, as I would be remiss if I left it out, it is simply randomizing the grid, offset, and gate of this first beat repeat. That adds a bunch of randomization in addition to the randomization we're getting from the variation control. Because this beat repeat triggers so often, we don't want it to become predictable. It's the whole reason why we are using beat repeat. And in case you're just learning it here for the first time or you need a reminder, if you do click this little hamburger in the upper right corner of LFO, you can map up to eight parameters individually to a single instance of LFO, which is how I'm doing it, which is one instance of the device. Think of that as your bonus for the day. And so here it is once more again in context with the rest of the loop. So beat repeat is also a powerful performance and transition effect. And let me show you how to set up a simple rack that maximizes that feature of beat repeat. So I have every element of my production grouped together and I'm going to be building this rack on that group track. So let me grab an instance of beat repeat and I'm going to place it here. I'm going to right click on that beat repeat and I'm going to group it onto itself so that it is now nested in an audio effect rack. And I'm going to click on the macros toggle and I'm going to reduce the number of macros to four as that's all we're going to need for this rack. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the chance control to 0% because we're not going to be using randomization. We're going to control how frequently this rack triggers. And we're going to do so by assigning repeat to macro one. I'm then going to assign the grid control to macro two. I'm going to assign the filter control to macro three, and I'm also going to assign the bandwidth control to macro three. And then I'm going to assign the frequency of the filter to macro four. We'll need to open up the macro mappings menu to adjust a few parameters. And I'm going to click on the M here on our rack to open that up. So first thing we need to do is we need to set the repeat for beat repeat to one as the minimum and zero as the maximum. And we need to do the same thing for the filter on control as well. That way, if the macro is above zero, then that effect will turn on as opposed to needing to get halfway through the macros range before triggering. Then we're just going to invert the filter width. And then we can close the macro mapping menu. And the final thing we will do is set the output to ins. So that way when we trigger our effect, we just hear the effect. So let me go ahead and play around with that and you can hear what I'm talking about. Okay. That last one was pretty good.
What can I say y'all, Beat Repeat is still the go. There is literally so much that you can do with this device, but it's slept on because it's one of the oldest devices in Ableton Live. I really would encourage you to take it for a spin. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. My new goal is now to try to hit 15,000 subscribers by the end of 2025, because we just kind of smashed through my 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year goal, about three months ahead of schedule. So let's see if we can't run the tab up just a little bit further before the calendar runs out. So I will see you next week. Till next time.